Hello everyone, welcome to day 22 of confinement. As you can see, we're back in the kitchen again, and uh, today we're going to do some cooking again. One of my last recipes that I have to offer to you. I was thinking with Easter coming up, it made me reminisce about my Nana and every Easter and Christmas and major holiday that we would come together, she would make her recipe for cheese ravioli. Um, I'm going to make my recipe for cheese ravioli because hers, quite frankly, is really, really difficult and takes a very, very long time. But it'll still be an homage to her. So let's get ourselves ready. Put on my apron. Teddy, you too. Put on your apron. Feel good? All right. Chef's hat and chef's hat. Or Teddy. All right, we're ready to start. So the first thing we want to talk about is what you will need. Um, don't kill me for not using direct from the ground tomatoes, but again, it takes way too much time. I use tomato paste. I use the Hunt's variety with the basil and oregano, uh, basil, garlic, and oregano combination involved. So I get six cans of this. Like so, I use one uh, 24 ounce can of Hunt's pasta sauce for cheeses, and I use one 24 ounce jar of Prego three cheese. That goes in to make your base for your sauce. Also things you want to have, you want to have some chili pepper powder, you want to have some garlic powder, you want to have some oregano, you want to have lots and lots of Parmesan cheese. Ground turkey or ground beef, two pounds of it. I use ground turkey because it's healthier. And pepperoni. I use these individual slices. I think that I'll explain to you why I do that soon. So that is your ingredients. When you have your ingredients all set out and ready to go, get yourself your pot, put it on the stove. And you can start emptying out your tomato paste into that pot. Let's have a conversation about sauce names for a second here. I don't inherently know Italian. However, I've picked up a little bit of it as I've gone along. I did take Latin in college and then high school. So I do have the basis for the Romance languages kind of stuck in my head. And it's really interesting to think about Prego. Prego and what that actually means in Italian. In Italian, prego is the response to grazie, which is what you say when you're being thankful. I appreciate you giving me this wonderful meal. Grazie. So what do you say to that in response? Prego. That is essentially you're welcome. It doesn't mean you're welcome, but it, it has the same meaning as what we use you're welcome for. Now that's interesting because then you think about, it's called your welcome sauce. Like you're saying thank you to Prego for making this wonderful sauce and they are preemptively saying you're welcome. Shouldn't they be named Grazie? Saying thank you for us buying it? 
I don't know, that's just me. But Prego, though strange, is not, has got nothing on ragu. What does ragu mean? Ragu means sauce. So when you're eating anything that's ragu, you're essentially eating sauce sauce. So when somebody says ragu sauce, it's kind of redundant. Okay, now we've got all of the saw, uh, the tomato paste in, and what you want to do is you want to now take each one of these cans and fill them once and a half with water. So you're going to take from six cans, you're going to make nine cans of water to add to your sauce. Okay, now that you've got your sauce and your water mixed in or into the pot, you can turn on the heat, turn it up to about halfway on the burner till it gets warm. And then we're going to turn it down to a simmer, so make sure you watch it. You don't want this to get too hot. It will burn on the bottom of the pan, and that would not be as tasty as you'd like it to be. Just keep stirring it because it will be thick trying to mix in the paste with the water. So keep stirring it so you get a fine, a smooth consistency throughout. In the meantime, you can mix in your other sauces, your jarred sauce. All right, and your other sauce. Damn it, I lost my spoon. Come here, you. Oh, and for any of you who are keeping track, I had to do the thing again today. The pilot light on the hot water heater did go out again. Wasn't that a joy. However, I did notice it last night when I was washing dishes, so I knew I didn't have hot water this morning, and I didn't try and take a shower and become very, very surprised and unhappy. But it's back working again. I do not know what's going on. that sit there like that for a little while and if you want it to be a little bit uh, thinner you can add more water I may add one more water later we'll see what it looks like because it will thin out I'm sorry it will thicken it will thicken as it as it reduces so let's move on to the next bit all right, this has been on the heat for a little bit. It's gotten warm. 
brought it up to a boil, and then I brought it back down to a simmer. So what you want to do now is you want to add some of your ingredients. I'm going to add... That's not the one I want to use. That one's not open yet. Let's choose one that's open. Chili powder. Chili powder. Just a dusting. We may come back a little bit for that later for taste. And a coating using coating the entire top of your saucepan so that you really can't see the red anymore of oregano. Okay. Give that a little stir in there. And your your garlic powder and give that Depending on how much garlic you like, you might want to be careful with this because this taste goes a long way. This is one of those things that you're going to want to taste it as you go through to make sure that you have the amount of garlic that you want. So just put a little bit to start. We're not finished with any of these ingredients, so don't put them away yet. And then we come to the Parmesan cheese. Using the whole side so you get a a diffusion. You don't want a big clump going in there all at once. Similar to how you did with the um, the oregano. You're going to cover the entire top of the sauce so that that's all you see is the cheese. And then stir it in. All right. It's nice and stirred in now. And we begin Push this back to the smaller burner because it doesn't need to be on the high burner anymore. Just at a simmer. And now we're going to move on with our pepperoni slices. I told you I would tell you why we had pepperoni slices. That's because the main ingredient that you're looking for in this is the oil. And the more surface area that you have on the pepperoni, the more of this pepperoni oil is going to come off of the pepperonis as you fry them. Front burner, turn that on to relatively high temperature. And just lay them out in the pan. It's very easy. All right, make sure that if you see one of these things, don't put this on the fire. These are not to be eaten. It even says it. Do not eat. There it is. Do not eat. Oops. These are not for food. They're just for keeping the moisture out of the pepperoni. Let the heat come up on this pan. I like using wooden utensils on these just to save my pans. Doo -doo -doo. Gotta watch it carefully because when this starts to go, it really starts to go. meantime, you just got to wait for it to heat up. And here we go. It's starting to sizzle now. Yay! That's what we're waiting for. And the pepperonis are starting to shrink up a little bit. You'll see that. So you can fit a few more of them into the open space of the fire. Feel free to flip them over as you go. Although that's not 100% necessary. Okay, once you've got them fried up, look pretty good. You can just push them aside to the top here, a little bit off the move the pan so that that area is mostly off the flame. And then you add some more.
don't want them to turn into little hard cups, so get them off that fire. got a decent amount done. Open up your pot and dump everything, including the oil, directly into the pan, the pot. And then go right back to doing more of your pepperoni. Anything smoky in here? Okay, yep, yeah, it's definitely getting smoky in here. Okay, I think I got that. Hmm. Let's finish up this pepperoni, shall we? Okay, well now that we've solved that problem, <laughs> we can go on to our turkey. Now we take the same pan that has the oil in it still, or at least the residue of the oil in it, and we take our turkey. and dump it into the pan. And we're gonna turn this into ground brown turkey. We get our second package. Drop that little baby right on there, same as the other. They used to tell me I was building a dream. And so I followed the mob when there was hurt to flower guns to bear. I was always there, right there on the job. They used to tell me I was building a dream with truth and glory.
glory ahead. Why should I be standing in line? Just waiting for bread. Once I built a railroad, made it run, made it race against time. Once I built a railroad, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Once I built a tower to the sun, brick and rivet and lime. Once I built a tower, now it's done. Brother, can you spare a dime? Once in khaki suits, gee, we looked swell, full of that Yankee doodly dum. Half a million boots went slogging through hell. I was the kid with the drum. Say, don't you remember, they called me Al. It was Al all the time. Say, don't you remember, I'm your pal. Buddy, can you spare the time? Okay. There we go. Oh, let's empty this one off as well. Make sure you don't get any more extra moisture into the sauce. All right, turn off our burner. And now we can stir all these things in, give them a nice, firm, good look. Look, see? It should be very nice in there. Yes, it is. All right. And now we can hit it with another set of our ingredients. I'm going to leave the chili powder out this time because the chili powder is strong and doesn't need that much more. Garlic. Oregano. Nice dusting of it. And then Parmesan. Very nice dusting of this. For now, that's where we're gonna leave it because this has got to simmer and kind of reduce a little bit and get itself used to all of the ingredients now uh, merging with each other and making everything taste good. So we just cover it back up again. We have a little opening for the steam to come out. You don't want it to burn. Have it on our gentle simmer and We'll come back in a little bit. All right, we've had our main ingredients simmering for quite some time now. So it is time, give it a little taste, see where we are. It's hot, you don't wanna put it right here now. Not too far off. Use a little bit more cheese. Just a touch. Chili pepper wouldn't go astray. Just this time it really needs a touch. That does not need to be a lot of that.
oregano flavor will infuse the whole thing as it simmers. So that's something that has to happen gradually. You can't just put the ingredient in there and hope that you're going to get the flavor you want. It's got to get some time to it. Come back a little bit later. Okay, we've been simmering our sauce for a little while now and it is almost done. So now it's time to add in our raviolis. I've been boiling this water, this, or this water is boiling, I'm ready to add them. So I can just take them and put them in gently, one at a time. The trick to know when they're done is when they start to float, that's when they're done. I'm singing a lot of songs about poverty today. I'm wondering if that has anything to do with the fact that I was told that our jobs were not returning until probably mid-May, maybe early June. Heh. Could be. Could be. Okay, these are pretty close to being ready. They're floating. They're floating. Wanna see? They're floating. Nice. Now, you can let them go a little bit longer, but if you go too, too long, they'll start to bust out of their, their confinement and then you have cheese in your water, and that won't be good. So think about taking them off pretty soon after they're ready. So I've got a couple of other things that are also on the menu. I've prepared some uh, whole grain garlic toast. So I'm going to put that over here. Onto my pizzazz. This is a pizza maker, but it has the ability of making pretty much anything that you want to have toasty heating from the bottom and the top. It's a cool little device. Put that on for about six minutes. I've also got mozzarella sticks that I'm gonna put over here in the air fryer. Your hat. Well, <clears throat> there we have it a full meal, Italian style. No, you absolutely may not take off your apron. What are you going to do if you get your fur dirty? Do you want some more to drink? All right. There you go. For those of you who don't have alcohol, it's a nice little blush, that watermelon crush. So, that's what I have to say. Day 22 of confinement, all through. Have a great day today. 
Remember, share, like, and subscribe, and uh, we shall see you tomorrow. We're all done. Hmm, that's pretty good.